Welcome into another edition of Sports Junkies here at the Racine Journal. Time Steve Sparky Pfeiffer from 105.7 FM, the fan in Milwaukee. Of course, he is Gary Wolfel. Hi, Gary. Hey, tell me about this Periscope stuff. Yeah, we got, so we got Periscope video here on the you fan. Know, for we, people yeah. that are over 30 years old, they probably are wondering what I'm over period. 30. Well, I know. You're, you're hip, though. You right. Know, so. so we have Periscope video going here. Uh, on the 1057 account. We've got a Periscope video going over there on the Racine Journal Times account, I think it is. Uh, and then we've got actual video going as well. So there's actually three forms of video going. We're going to try and do this every week. Now, normally it'll be on Thursdays at like 10.30 this week because our producer, Greg Geeson, had other plans. Something to do with... I'm not going to get into Does it. Does this keep so going when we go to break? can't do it. Then? Yes. This so we got to be on our best behavior all the time. Yeah, we're going to roll this straight Not that it's a problem. You know, all right. We're always on our best behavior. So let's talk a little bit about high school sports. Uh, we will talk Packers uh, as well at some point. We're going to start with high school sports in racing. The Southeastern Conference specifically, um, racing schools continue to struggle. Gary, let's start off first uh, with Park. They lose to King 24 uh, to 21 in this one. Park now goes to 0 and 2. We said last week that we thought Park would be competitive in this game mm -hmm. against King, but King is probably the best team in the Milwaukee City Conference. They were competitive, they just couldn't win. I'll tell you what, I actually came away from that game impressed with Park. Right. Even though they lost, I saw some really concrete positive signs sure. that they're headed in the right direction. Uh, they have a running back named Vince Cozy, who I think is tremendous. Uh, and, and to their credit, they tried to get him the ball in a myriad of ways, and uh, whether as a receiver or running back. I mean, this guy is unbelievable. He, he was playing cornerback. He did a great job playing cornerback. He returned uh, kicks. Uh, just a tremendous player. But when you have a player like that, you got a chance. And uh, I thought they played really well, and I thought Kellen Hargrove, the quarterback, is one of the top three or four quarterbacks in the county. Look, it should be noted this. They were getting hammered going into the fourth. They were down 24-6, to six, I believe it was, going into the and, fourth quarter. And they came back. Okay, and they did. And, they and, fought and, back to make it a competitive I, I, game at the end. I, I was very very impressed because a lot of times when you're in that situation, you see a defeatist attitude among right. the players. And they want to keep playing. They got better than game one. So if they come out with that same kind of attitude you know, in the following weeks, I think they're going to be fine. Now we've got to talk about the quarterback for K. Justice King. I can't even make that up. His last name is King. King he plays correct, at King. Correct, correct. 242 yards, three touchdowns, one pick, a passer rating of 125.4. Park couldn't stop the ball from throwing through the and that, That's Park's biggest issue right now, giving up the big plays. In the, in the first game, I think they gave up four touchdowns of 30 yards or more, something sure. like that. Something crazy. They had a couple breakdowns again against King, gave up big plays. That is an area where they really, really have to settle down. So Park now, again, 0-2. and two. Next up, they take on Indian Trail. Indian Trail was got beat by Germantown. They got beat by Homestead last week. They were competitive against Homestead. Yeah. Uh, but now the Southeast Conference part of the schedule starts, and we'll see how good Indian Trail is, because I think coming into this year was Oak Creek, Franklin, Indian Trail were the three schools mm -hmm. people were looking at. Yeah. No, uh, I, I think the South, Southeast Conference, outside of a couple teams, is very average, very suspect. Uh, but Case has to pick it up. Orlick's got to pick it up whether they can. Or it's not. High. We'll see. Right. It's, it's highly unlikely. Uh, speaking of Racine Case, they continue to struggle. They get hammered by, water, uh, by Waterford, I should say, 34-7. to Sam uh, Allen for Waterford, a uh, big day there, throwing for a touchdown, running for a touchdown as well. This is the stat I like on Waterford. Ten different players had at least one rush attempt on the Waterford football team. And they're not going to throw much. They're going to play defense and run the football. And Case couldn't hang them. Yeah, getting back to Case, the thing that would really, really nod me if I was their head coach was the penalties. Yeah. They had something, I don't have the exact figure in front of me, but they had like 15 penalties, and I totally understand that they're going through a transition period right now with new coach, new scheme, new system, blah, blah, blah. Sure. Okay. But that comes down to discipline. I don't care who the, who the team is. It's discipline not to have that many penalties. You're going to have a couple, two or three. But to get double-digit penalties is inexcusable. But well, again, it's early in the year, new coaching staff. We've talked about this before, and we'll see how it plays out going forward. You know, it's funny. I was looking back, because I'm looking at the box score for Case. I'm like, Man, who are half these guys? Mm -hmm. So I look back at last year, and you forget. King left. He Absolutely. graduated. Pinson graduated. Pinson, yeah. Contreras, the quarterback, he's sure. done. And so you, it's really a new coach and really kind of a new team in general as far as the guys that are getting playing. No, no question. I mean, you, you got to give him a one-year grace period. I mean, he's got to get the system in. He's got to get to know his players and vice versa. So 
it's no surprise that they're struggling early, and right. the odds are they're going to struggle the rest of the way. Yeah, I agree with you on that. And then, of course, is Burlington and Horlick, this game, Martin Controversy. By the way, Case takes on Franklin next. They're going to lose. Uh, Burlington takes on Horlick. Uh, well, they are. They're going to get killed. Okay. I, I just, I, I feel sorry. I, they're going to get killed. Burlington uh, beats Horlick 39-34. Now, there are things to talk about in this game, for instance. Uh, we're, we're not going to necessarily get into it, but Tavares Adams, uh, Triggs as well, mm-hmm. and some of these guys. But this game is all about the coach. Now, are we doing something uh, coach separate Fletcher. on this? No, we're going to talk about this right now. I don't think we have to do a whole separate video necessarily on Fletcher. But Fletcher makes a comment for Racine Orlick, makes a comment. To the Burlington a report from Burlington, yes. No, he made a um, comment to the, no, no, yeah. to the referee okay. during the game, and, and the reporter heard it. But something along the lines of a, a defensive back made a pretty big hit on a player from Burlington. Mm-hmm. Lad him out. They took him out on a stretcher. Um, now, he appears to be okay and fine, fast-forwarding the story. But they threw a personal foul flag on the guy that made the hit from Horlick. Fletcher... The coach uh, at Horlick, who is thought to be a pretty good coach, I've always thought he was a pretty good coach, um, kind of loses his mind a little bit um, and pretty much starts saying somewhere along the lines of, you know, if my player, who is African-American, if my player would have been Caucasian, Caucasian you wouldn't have thrown funny. that flag. Right. Okay. Let me tell you first off my feelings on this. First off... Well, I'm shocked that you fact, would tell me your feelings on this. I know. <laughs> but but th- this is where I'm concerned. Yeah. Fletcher said what he said in the moment right. of rage, whatever, fine. But my thing is, is there a sense of racism amongst referees that you have a head coach making an allegation like that? Even in a moment of, of frustration or fits, okay? Mm-hmm. The fact that they would even cross your mind that that could be a situation tells me that there must have been thoughts prior to this that there might be something going on with the referees. That's what shocked me more than yeah, anything. Yeah. The fact that he said, nah. But the fact that no, he you can't thought pull, of you it. You can't blow it off like, nah. Because but Jared, the, the fact that, that he, he can't, that he crossed the line, he admitted it, and he was suspended for one game. If there, he would have said There's it, no ifs, ands, or buts. He made a mistake. Okay, fine. But for him to think that, Gary, yeah. don't you think then that there is something going on where coaches, or that coach in particular, might think that there is some type of racism going on with refs. Well, subconsciously, yeah, it came to the forefront. Obviously, uh, right. you know, and that's a problem. And, and, if and that's and being thought by any coach, then that has to be addressed with the referees. I agree, and it was not the proper place to do it. Agreed. And that's why you I have agree. meetings between players, sure. uh, coaches, and, and administration, and so forth. Um, but yeah, I have been in this business almost I don't know thirty-five years. Okay, yeah. just ballpark figure. I have never, ever heard of an incident like this. Have you? Um, well, no. No. Not that I can think of. I mean, it, it is incredible. I mean, it has no place in the realm of sporting events. None. You, you know, you, you go out, outside the game or event or whatever, fine. You know, that's something you deal with. But during the course of the game, that has no place for it. None. And, and it, the, the officials uh, that reprimanded Coach Fletcher were right. That had to be addressed. But I'm asking you again, do you think that this speaks to racism amongst referees? No, I, I, I don't. Do you think that's an issue? You know what? I mean, who am I to say? There might be an official out there that is racist. Because again, for Fletcher to but say to, but, this, but to make because a, like you said, it never gets said. So for a referee to say, for a head coach, a head coach now, yeah. not a player, a I head coach, you, for a head coach to say this, there has to be background on this. Fletcher just didn't all of a sudden just one day go, hey, you know what? I think there might be some racism going on. I think I'm going to go say this. Well, of course. There has there, to be a, a track racism. record of you, building you, up you, in his mind. You don't know who the official was, number one. Correct. I mean, we don't know. So I, I would never, ever throw that as even a possibility because it's unfair. But to Gary, I don't think it's, and maybe I'm wrong, I don't necessarily think it's just a specific official. I think he might be looking at it. Uh, this has just been a problem in general. Uh, see, that, that, that's, that's baloney. I mean, it, he, he's been around the game long enough. I mean, again... I was not there. I don't know the context of what I. you said, so I, I'm not. I, I'm very reluctant to make a comment about it. But uh, again, in, in all the time that I've covered sports, I, I've never heard race coming into play during an event. Well, I'm sure it's coming but, into play in other yeah. parts of the country, but maybe not in this part of the country. But I guarantee yeah. you, it's happened before. This isn't breaking ground. I mean, this isn't something. No, and, and, and it'll be interesting uh, to see where this goes from here. You know, if. 
the WIA doesn't address it, if they don't have some kind of a forum with coaches and referees and stuff like that. Because, I mean, this has to be brought to a head. I mean, if there is subliminal racism, it's, it's got to be addressed. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. So, Burlington beats Horlick. Uh, 39-24. Horlick now 0-2 and two in this one. And next up, they have Tremper. Not that good either. Tremper 0-2. Uh, they got drilled by Antioch, Illinois uh, last week. Wow. Got absolutely annihilated. Somebody threw a, a stat out the other day. The SEC is like, what is it, 3 and it's some bizarre number. Where they are very good. 1-11 and 11. By the non-three schools. <laughs> by the top three schools. By the top three schools. I, I don't know. Well, but again, I mean, Franklin and Oak Creek are, are the two schools right now that are playing well. Indian Trail, they're all one, too. Uh, we're we're well. getting side In the Southeast. I'm just here. ignoring Greg. We're trying to do a show. <laughs> so, Burlington beat Holy 39-24. Horlick now again, 0-2. So, Park, Horlick, Case, none of them have wins. Uh, so far. So that'll do it for another edition of Sports Junkies here talking about the Southeastern Conference in high school, uh, in high school football. We'll talk to you next time here at RacingSportsZone.com.